Hello. I am Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute fellow at the University of California, Irvine, here bringing you the summary of the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas war. It is going to the eve of December 6, 2023 in the United States, the morning of December 7, 2023 in the Middle East. Starting with the hostage situation, the 138 people who are still held in captivity in the Gaza Strip. The spokesperson of the U.S. National Security Council today, John Kirby, stated in response to questions that it has been proven that Hamas uses sexual violence as a weapon of war and that the group is likely still doing so. So this relates to ongoing speculation and different rumors that have surfaced both within Israel and the United States that it is possible that Hamas preferred to blow up the truce that had occurred rather than release the remaining women that were in captivity because it does not want those women to be released in order to report sexual violence or sexual assaults that they underwent during captivity. However, the, yesterday, the IDF spokesperson was asked about this as well, and he said that all the rumors and speculation about this are not helpful. He stated that the, everything that's being said is inaccurate, not contributing to the situation, and that he urges everyone to stop spreading rumors. Moving on to the ongoing fighting in the Gaza Strip, there were rockets and mortars today pummeling the southern parts of Israel primarily. Rockets targeted the areas surrounding the Gaza Strip, Kerem Shalom, near Oz and Magen, Abu Talul, and Segev Shalom. In Beersheva, a rocket landed in a truck park area, and some hazardous materials started leaking out of one of the trucks, and reportedly several people were lightly injured. Rockets also targeted Ashkelon and Eshkol, where there was a direct hit in an area in which one person was lightly injured. Moving on to the fighting in the Gaza Strip, the IDF is reporting that it has moved into the three main areas that it has been working on surrounding in the last several days. It has now moved into the Jabalia refugee camp and Sanja'iya neighborhoods in the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, and the Khan Yunis city in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip. According to reports, the front lines have been breached in all three of those places. In Jabalia refugee camp, the IDF is reporting substantial battles in the outskirts of the city as it moves in, and the IDF published that it uncovered extensive weapons caches in a mosque in the city, including missiles that can range all the way to the center and the northern parts of Israel. In Sajaia, there were also intensive battles reported by some local people on the ground as well, and several tunnel entrances were located and destroyed. In Khan Yunis, which is where the central parts of the fighting is going on in the last 24 hours, IDF Special Forces Brigades have reported that they are operating in the heart of the city already, and the city itself is besieged. There was intensive bombing reporting throughout the day, and at least 30 tunnel entrances were located and destroyed. A Hamas outpost was also, also taken over by the IDF, and intensive battles are reported with Hamas's Khan Yunis Division, which is known as one of the two strong divisions that Hamas has in the entire Gaza Strip. Sources in Gaza stated that the, that the fighting in Khan Yunus is the most intensive since the war began and that the fighting is ongoing and continuing. In addition to these, there were substantial bombings reported today throughout the entire Gaza Strip. Special bombing raids were noted in Jabalia refugee camp, in Rafah, which is the most southern city in the Gaza Strip, where the IDF has not operated yet on the ground, and in Khan Yunus itself, as well as the Nusirat refugee camp in the central parts of the Gaza Strip. That is particularly noteworthy because on their way down to Khan Yunus, the IDF specifically bypassed the towns of Deir el-Balakh, Nusirat, and Bureid refugee camps. However, there was reporting intensive bombings in the Nusirat refugee camp today. The IDF reported it carried out over 200 air raids in the last 24 hours. In other news, the Washington Post reported today, quoting several Israeli security officials, stating that upwards of 5,000 Hamas operatives have been killed since the war began, out of an estimate 30,000 fighters that the group has. These numbers are substantially lower than what was reported yesterday in a summary issued by the IDF Southern Command, in which it was listed that 6,000 Hamas operatives were killed out of 20,000 that the group has. However, the discrepancy between these may just be a result of different intelligence or speculation. Regarding casualties in the last 24 hours, two IDF soldiers are reported killed in the Gaza Strip, bringing the total number of IDF soldiers that were killed since the invasion began to 87. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, 16,248 Palestinians have been killed in the Gaza Strip since the war began, and upwards of 40,000 are injured, and there are still several thousand buried under the rubble of the different buildings that have been bombed out. Moving on to the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. Amidst the U.S. pressure I reported on in the last several days, the Israeli government today approved substantially expanding the amount of fuel that is allowed to enter the Gaza Strip. The exact figure is not disclosed, but it is likely doubling the amount of fuel that has been allowed to enter to 120,000 liters per day. So I reported in the last several days that the U.S. is mounting heavy pressure on Israel to allow more fuel to enter the Gaza Strip in order to allow the operation of sanitation plants and clean water facilities. At first, the United States said that they are going to pressure Israel to double the amount of fuel yesterday. It was suddenly reported that the United States is going to ask Israel to triple the amount of fuel. I speculated that this may be a bargaining tactic in order to allow Israel to eventually agree on only doubling the amount of fuel. According to reports from the government meeting, Defense Minister Gallant proposed that Israel, in fact, 
only double the amount of fuel that is allowed to enter. However, they will, they will st also state that if Hamas allows the Red Cross to visit hostages and offer them medicines, Israel will then allow the amount of fuel to be tripled to 180,000 liters of fuel. This, was co this came under substantial criticism from hawkish elements in Israel's right-wing government. How, despite support for the decision by the security establishment, the IDF is specifically saying that they are not opposed to the entrance of more fuel because they think that this will also contribute to avoiding humanitarian catastrophe in the Gaza Strip, or at least escalating humanitarian catastrophe in the Gaza Strip, and will buy Israel more time diplomatically. In the news related to the humanitarian situation, the IDF again put out messages in Khan Yunus to the residents, calling upon them not to travel on the Salah Hadin Road. This was a road that prior to the truce, and then during the truce, was known as a humanitarian corridor that Palestinians can evacuate on. The IDF is now considering the Salah Hadin Road a war zone. Thousands of Palestinians were seen evacuating Khan Yunus towards Rafah through the western corridors that the IDF has opened up, and the IDF opened up another corridor from the Deir al-Balakh town in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip for Palestinians to evacuate along the coastline towards Rafah. Like yesterday also, the IDF announced a four-hour tactical pause in the fighting in the Shabora refugee camp in Rafah between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. This is particularly noteworthy because prior to the truce, there was an agreement between the sides that there would be these four-hour humanitarian pauses. However, since the truce, seemingly that deal should have crashed. However, the IDF is still announcing these random four-hour pauses in Rafah. Likely this is associated with the entrance of humanitarian aid. Unclear at this time. Other news related to the humanitarian situation, U.S. agencies reported today a growing crisis in the Gaza Strip. The World Food Program stated that delivering humanitarian aid has become nearly impossible, and the United Nations Office for Coordinating Humanitarian Affairs specifically stated that Rafah is now the only area in which any humanitarian assistance can be offered, and this is also only in a limited capacity. The reports are that the humanitarian trucks cannot get into Khan Yunus or anywhere north of Rafah anymore, and there are reports of spreading hunger in Khan Yunus and in the different refugee camps or makeshift refugee camps that are now popping up around Rafah. UNRWA today also reported that it refused to open its warehouse in, warehouses in Khan Yunus due to fear of Israeli attacks. In response, there were there was scenes of Palestinians breaking into different UNRWA warehouses where food storages and other essential supplies are kept and looting them. A total of 88 trucks carrying food, water, and medical supplies entered the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours, as well as six to 9,000 liters of fuel. This is two trucks that were permitted to enter. Moving on to the West Bank, there was substantial IDF activity today throughout the West Bank. In, in the Janine refugee camp, three weapons labs and two tunnel entrances were destroyed after a substantial IDF operation in the city, and there were several confrontations reported. Several Palestinians were reported injured, and one IDF soldier was likely injured as well. Other IDF activities reported in the Kfar Shukba area, Kilkilia, Kfar Tamun, Kfar Khalul, and the Balata refugee camp, in which a lot of weapons were confiscated. A total of four Palestinians were reported killed in these different confrontations in the last 24 hours, including two 16-year-old kids in the Yabed and the Kfar Tamun area, and many Palestinians are reported injured in the different gun battles. A total of 16 Palestinians were arrested in the last 24 hours. These include three Hamas members. In addition, we to the West Bank, following the United States, announcement yesterday that the United States is going to limit the entrance of violent settlers to the United States and their fa and possibly their families. Belgium today announced that it is also going to limit the entrance of radical settlers and they will not be allowed into the country. Germany later reported that it also supports the U.S. move and is going to consider it itself. And Reuters reported that an internal EU document is going to recommend to the EU states in their upcoming meeting on Monday that they increase sanctions against Hamas and against violent settlers in the West Bank. Amidst this also, Israeli Defense Minister Gallant today issued an administrative arrest order against one of two settlers who were arrested last week in connection with different attacks and terrorism against Palestinians. What an administrative arrest order means is that the, that settler can now be held without trial, without seeing a judge, for a period of usually up to four months, unless the Minister of Defense again extends the administrative arrest order. Moving on to the north of Israel, southern parts of Lebanon, there were substantial barrages of rockets and mortars fired from southern Lebanon into Israel. These targeted the Hermon, the Arab al Ramsha area in western Galilee, Shtula, Malachia, Matat, and Margaliot in the upper Galilee, and Al Jazeera specifically noted 16 missiles that were sent from Lebanon towards the upper Galilee, targeting different Israeli outposts, and specifically the Matat area. The IDF reported that it retaliated against the Hezbollah command center and other terror infrastructures throughout southern Lebanon, and specifically that these retaliations occurred with air attacks as well as substantial artillery fighting as well. There was also a report today in the United States that the U.S. is trying to develop a diplomatic solution to avoid war between Israel and Hezbollah, which the sides see as inevitable at this point unless some sort of diplomatic solution is found. 
They are hoping to finalize the border between Israel and Lebanon, similar to the maritime agreement that Israel and Lebanon came to a year ago. The aim is to have a solution that will possibly be respected by Hezbollah, and therefore to avoid a situation where Hezbollah can drag Lebanon into the war because the situation is still considered an official dispute between the countries. Relating to this, Israel Defense Minister Gallant today met with local council leaders of the north of Israel. The entire area in the north of Israel has been evacuated towards areas more in the center parts of the country. In the meeting, he stated that he hopes that there will be a diplomatic possibility to ensure that Hezbollah is pushed north of Lebanon above the Litani area based upon UN Resolution 1701. However, that if this does not happen, other alternatives are that Israel will have to do this by force. He stated that Israel does not want a war in the north and prefers the first option, adding that the alternative option will result in the fact that Beirut will end up looking the way Gaza looks today. Moving on to some of the regional developments, the Houthi rebels in Yemen today fired several missiles towards the most southern city of Israel, towards Eilat. They were intercepted in areas above the Red Sea. The group then put out a statement saying that it fired ballistic missiles against military targets in Eilat, and they stated, and I'm quoting, the Yemeni forces continue their military activity against Israel and are continuing to prevent Israeli ships from sailing through the Arab Sea and the Red Sea as support for our Palestinians in the Gaza Strip until the Israeli aggression in Gaza ceases. In other regional news, the UK they reported a nautical incident involving a drone west of the Hudaydah port in Yemen. No other information was, give, was given. It was later stated that in a different report that the US intercepted a drone in the area. Possibly these are connected. Unclear what that drone was targeting at this time. Other news, Reuters today reported, quoting two sources, stating that Saudi Arabia is pressuring the United States to restrain its response against the Houthis. So there's been escalating rhetoric within the United States about either targeting the Houthis or possibly even retaliating against Iran as a result of the Houthis attacking at least four different ships over the last weekend. The United States is continuously saying that it is talking to its allies about how it is going to respond. According to this report, Saudi Arabia is substantially pressuring the United States to not respond intensively against the Houthis out of fear that it will ignite a regional war. Saudi Arabia and the Houthis were at a very intensive war over the last decade. However, in the last year, there have been direct talks between the two sides, and things appear to have been spiraling down. Moving on to the political and general trends that occurred, the UN Secretary General today, Antonio Guterres, activated for the first time since he took office Article 99 of the United Nations. This allows him to convene the Security Council in order to warn them of a fear regarding disruptions to international peace and stability. Reportedly, he's going to do this in order to warn them about the deteriorating situation in the Gaza Strip and the collapsing humanitarian situation, stating this is going to affect the entire world's international peace and stability. Israel heavily condemned this, noting that Guterres did not see fit to activate this in response to any other crises that occurred in the years he has been in office, such as the Russia-Ukraine war, and also, and also added that Guterres himself is a threat to international stability and security rather than the Israel-Hamas war. Other political news, the U.S. Justice Department has officially launched an investigation into the murder and kidnappings of U.S. citizens on October 7th. Again, they noted that this has taken time as a result of gathering forensic evidence from the scenes, but now an official investigation against Hamas is underway. Turkish President Erdogan today again stated and echoed what was said by his intelligence services, that there will be severe consequences if Israel attempts to assassinate any Hamas leadership that may take refuge in Turkey. In political news, Relating to Israel, there's ongoing political turmoil that may end up affecting the way the war runs. The war cabinet, reportedly people are not trusting each other. Specifically, there's a lot of pressure within Minister Gantz's party that Minister Gantz and Gadi Eisenkot will resign from the government, leaving the war cabinet and effectively dismantling the war cabinet, because the war cabinet was only established in order to allow them to enter the government. According to different reports, the arguments that are made in their party is that Netanyahu is busier running a political campaign and trying to save his political career and framing the war as a way to save his political career, rather than actually making sure that Israel wins the war. Moving on to speculation regarding the future of the Gaza Strip, El Arabi Al Jadid today reported that there is substantial concern within Egypt that the United States has not yet been vocal enough in rejecting Israeli ideas regarding uprooting Palestinians from the Gaza Strip to Egypt. How and that the United States has simply stated that they are against any forced immigration. The report stated that while Egypt has thrown its full weight against the idea that Palestinians will be forced to emigrate into the Sinai Peninsula, they have done everything from threaten Israel that they will secede from the peace treaty between the countries and threaten 
in Europe, that this will lead to a massive refugee movement towards Europe. There is still concern that Israel plans to gradually force Palestinians down south and then that they will eventually burst through the border and that this will not be pinned on any official policy of Israel, but simply a development as a result of the war. And that the and this report also stated that the U.S. and Western sources are pressuring the Egyptian military to possibly agree to the entrance of a substantial amount of Palestinian refugees in exchange for economic benefits, however, that Egypt is heavily against this. Other news relating to the future of the Gaza Strip, the U.S. State Department spokesperson today, Matthew Miller, say that the U.S. is against the establishment of security zones or buffers between Gaza and Israel that will come at the expense of Palestinian territory. This is something that has been floated in Israel in the last several days. The U.S. is now saying that they are heavily against that. In addition, he added that the U.S. recognizes that there will have to be a transition period in which the IDF remains in control of the Gaza Strip, but that control must be handed over to the Palestinians. He stated that, the, that there could be no reoccupation of the Gaza Strip. C control will have to be handed over to a Palestinian authority with strengthened security forces. Relating to this, Sky News in Arabic today reported, and they quoted Palestinian sources saying that Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas is willing to assume control of the Gaza Strip. Responding to this, Prime Minister Netanyahu stated, I'm quoting, As long as I am Prime Minister of Israel, that will not happen. Whoever educates his children for terror, funds terror, and supports the families of terrorists will not control Gaza after we destroy Hamas. So this relates to the ongoing confrontation between Israel and the United States and the pressure that the United States is mounting on Israel to come up with its day after plan and the concern that Israel does not actually have a day after plan. According to the United States, a revitalized Palestinian Authority will have to be the one that takes over the Gaza Strip. Israel is saying that they are not going to allow the Palestinian Authority to take over the Gaza Strip. However, it's not stating what will actually happen, and this remains right now an unknown stalemate. That is my report for the last 24 hours. I'll be back tomorrow.